bottom to the T.O.B. Well, it's a brand new beat. Theo Man is well, coming at you with How to Buy Super 8. Come on, let's check it out. Hey there guys, Theo Manny's Wealth coming at you with the how to buy Super 8. All right, let's start it off. We have, so when you're looking for a Super 8 camera, one of the main things you want to check is the lens. Make sure that that lens is good, nice and clean. Usually when I'm looking for a Super 8, I try to make sure that they have a lens cap. Because most of the time, you can assure yourself that the lens will be well protected and it will still be in good working order. This is probably one of the most expensive things to replace if you're going to try to replace anything on a Super 8 camera. So now in the day and age, we're doing, you know, if it was in the 90s, I'd say go to, you know, your local thrift store and gun around, take some batteries and see if you can get lucky. That's not so much the case anymore. Now, it's pretty much online what you're going to be buying, and you're not going to be able to get your hands on anything until you actually pay for it and it gets to you. So you want to make sure that you make the right choice from the get-go. Pictures of the lens, pictures of the battery compartment, it's huge. You know, a lot of these cameras had little things that came, the battery holders, and they were specific to each one of these cameras. If, um, if it doesn't have it, it's not going to work. So you really wanna make sure that it has it. This one I had to rebuild because of the corrosion. Another thing that you're gonna be coming across a lot, it's gonna be rare that you find a camera that doesn't have a corroded battery compartment. Now don't fret, if it looks corroded in the pictures, see how bad it is and you might be able to get it home once you get it clean it up and that might be the only thing that's wrong with it i've had that happen a couple of times and well more than a couple of times um so some of those cameras that say untested for parts you know they threw in batteries and they didn't bother to clean the corrosion from the battery compartment or maybe they didn't see it corroded on the inside of the compartment and it didn't work for them. So you can sometimes pick something up that looks like it's in great condition, has only a little bit of damage in the, ba in the battery compartment and clean it up. You have a rocking brand new camera that probably hasn't been used in like 30 years and maybe only shot like 10 cartridges or something. You never know. So, this one is the Vivitar 98 PM. This, it has a variety of functions. It has a single frame, 18, 24, and 32 frames a second. It has a manual and automatic um, iris adjuster. That's what I usually look for um, because I shoot a lot with expired Super 8 and you want to be able to open the shutter, or close the shutter accordingly, uh, how you need to. Um, some cameras you'll come across that don't have it. This little Bell & Howell, these are really nice little cameras. It's the MicroStar Z. This one is um, super light. It takes two AA batteries and it is just like extremely simple. Just point and shoot. I mean, you do have to you know, mess with it and like focus in on stuff and whatnot. And you have to set your diopter, of course. And that's, if you're gonna be shooting with new Super 8, any of your um, 50D, 100D, if you try to shoot 250 or 500 or 200 to 500, you will run into a problem in the sense that you are going to be, you know, overexposing a lot of the film. The good thing about the new Vision 3 line, it has a 13 stop latitude. 
So you can pretty much shoot anything and still have really nice pictures. So something to keep in mind with these little point and shoots, these had really nice little lenses and stuff, um, really nice clear viewfinders. Good stuff. Once again, when you're buying a Super 8, make sure that the battery compartment is good. Make sure that your lens is clear. There's some that won't come with a with the lens cover, but a lot of times people took the care of putting a filter on to protect the lens. So a lot of times you may see something that doesn't look like it belongs on the lens on the edge, or maybe it just looks cooler or something. Every time, anytime that you do order from any one of these Mercari, Etsy, uh, eBay, make sure that you always, if you can communicate with the buyer or communicate with the seller as the buyer and make sure that you are covered with, if it works, like what did they do? What didn't work about it? You know, if they can give you a little bit like more information on what you're purchasing and it would be so much safer for you. So there's a whole slew of different cameras that you can buy. There were millions and millions of cameras that were made, literally millions of cameras. Um, this one was the Minolta XL 400. And these, there's some cameras that fall into like a little bit of the mid zone. It's like uh, this Vivitar is a really nice camera. It has a macro lens and it has the four different frame rates. This one only has two, well, to a certain extent, it has classically 18 frames a second, single frame, but this one also comes with an intervalometer, runs on two batteries, has a manual and auto adjustment, and it has a macro function. And these cameras are rocking. It's a neat little camera. If you ever get a chance, you know, the Minolta XL400, I've I bought this, I just got this one not too long ago, maybe like two weeks ago or something. Good little camera. So keep your eye out. These are good. Uh, make sure that the lens is good. Battery compartment is inside of the the actual, this, like a lot of them are separate and you'll have, you'll have like a battery, like pack to hold the batteries and stuff. These came out in the 80s. You have your cameras that came out in the 70s. This one's the Nikon Super Zoom eight times. These are really nice cameras. These were used for like, these were made for the prosumer at the beginning of when Nikon was first starting to make Super 8s. And these had no extra stuff for the compartment. But if you put the battery holder, if you put it wrong, you'll it'll start to burn. You'll start to actually smell some stuff burning. So you want to make sure that that is on there correctly. Good little cameras. Dig them. Nice lens. This one, the battery, uh, the light meter didn't work. Another thing that you're going to run into is that if you do buy the camera and you you get it and you notice that the battery doesn't, the light meter doesn't work, for these types of cameras, since they were automatic and manual adjustment, you could still adjust the aperture even though you didn't have the light meter working or a, you know the battery, the proper battery that goes into it because these also had a different type of battery that went into them. Well, I think this one, yeah, these, these had the 1.35 volt and uh, those you can do with the wine cells um, are the ones that they're air batteries. They don't last as long as the other batteries, the 1.5, but you'll get a more accurate reading from your light meter. These cameras are pretty rock solid. The Nikons have a good solid motor. Start to run into a lot of these as well. This is the Bolex 155 Super Zoom, Super Macro Zoom. These were really nice little cameras, really sturdy, awesome. Uh, 
handling for it. It was so well balanced. They had a macro function, 18 frames, 32 frames a second. It has a small thing that where the battery is, you can, um, there's a piece that usually breaks off from the battery. This isn't necessarily, you know, a no sell because of it, but you do want to make sure if you can, that these are intact or if anything, that you still have the contacts that came with it, the original ones. These guys also had a 3.5 volt. They took two of them and had a little compartment here so you could put it in there. Great little cameras. Thing about Bolex though, these you can find them still in working order, but there is um, a certain thing to them that they do usually need a lot more maintenance than some of the other cameras that I have on the table. There's, um, you know, when you bought a Bolex new, they recommended that you would get it serviced every two years. So they kind of, I don't know if, you know, they were made to break down or not, but maybe it was the beginning of that whole era. But these guys are nice cameras. If you can get a hold of one, make sure that that battery compartment is still intact. The cool thing about these guys is that they had a lens hood that was built in, a metal one. So a lot of times you'll find the lenses really nice on these. All right, so now we'll move into a little bit of the more expensive cameras. If you're starting off, I would recommend that you get something along the lines of the Minolta or the Nikon, the Bell & Howell. These are nice if you're just gonna be taking a trip, a really quick trip and you just wanna shoot some stuff. These are perfect for that. You know, if you're gonna be doing more of a, you know, the filmmaking adventure, these are really good for that because they it's multifunctional and you can adjust the aperture. If you want to do, you know, some trick photography along with your stuff, the Minolta XL400 is awesome for that. But then we start to get into this area where this is the Niso S800. These guys are super awesome. Fantastic lenses, the Schneider Cruzenach 7 to 70 millimeter. Uh, no, I'm sorry, this one was a 7 to 80 millimeter, 1.8. Um, these had a um, 150 degree shutter angle, which wasn't super good, but at the same time, it has um, instant lap dissolve. It has a, I think it's a um, 54 frame lap dissolve. And then it has automatic and manual exposure for your lighting. It has an intervalometer. It has the fade function, which so you can as a variable shutter, so you can either put it at half closed, quarter closed, or fully closed, so you can have a nice uh, fade into black or fade in from white. Um, it also, if you're shooting in really, really intensely lit situations, you could put it half closed, so you don't even need a neutral density filter. Um, if you don't have that much light and you'd still like to take pictures, you can actually open, the variable shutter will open to 360 degrees, but it's only used, you can only be used with the intervalometer. So if you're gonna be taking single frame up to six frames a second, and that's it. You cannot do 18 frames, you can't, can't do any of the other frame rates, 18, 24, or 54. You'll ruin the camera if you do. So you have to be careful with that. And that's the trick with some of these cameras. Some of these functions, they had a lot of functionality, but if you try to engage them in the manner that they weren't designed for, then you can ruin your camera. So you have to watch out for that. That's why these guys, if you are gonna throw down the money for a Niso or for maybe like your Canon AT814, you know, or 1012, you really wanna make sure that you know what you're doing and you be careful with your gear because you can ruin it if you're not like careful. This is the Canon Auto Zoom 814. This is the pre black versions that came. These were awesome cameras, excellent optics. Um, 
some of these had a few problems that like this one I bought it and it didn't work. I got it and it still hasn't worked. I have to send it to get fixed, either that or try to fix it myself. But it looked perfect. I followed all my own guidelines and it still ended up being not working. And that was for something that I wouldn't even have been able to have noticed because it it was right here in here where it was the problem, which looks perfect in a picture, but once you get it, bam, doesn't work. So super bummer on that. Overall, these are excellent cameras as well. If you can't get one that is functional, you know, there are a lot of vendors out there that will sell you a camera for about four to five hundred dollars, you know, six nine depending on what you're buying and those are good cameras they're, they're not bad at all the thing is about them is that you they're already serviced which is really super nice if they've already been serviced that means that they've been cleaned all the gunk has been taken out you know hopefully whatever parts that needed to be replaced were replaced now a lot of servicing stations they won't do that because that's almost like a complete refurb so there's also, you know, a buy beware for those. You know, I've heard a lot of stories of people that have forked out five, six, eight hundred dollars for serviced cameras and the camera didn't work. Luckily, because of communication with those companies, with the people that did the servicing, they were still able to send the camera back and finally get a functional camera in the end. This is something that you need to be careful about. So that's your, your upper echelon cameras. And you run into these guys, your, your pro-level cameras. This is the Bolu 5008S Multi-Speed Sound. These were fantastic. This was their bar none interchangeable lenses that you can, um, you can sync sound with them. They are awesome cameras. Massive lenses, like, they just wicked, wicked cool. Thing about these dudes is, is that to work with these, you're not just going to be spending on the camera itself. You're going to be spending on a bit more of your kit than other than just this. So these guys need a charger, and the charger, this, the camera by itself can run you about anywhere from. I don't know. I've seen them for. 200 180 bucks and up to about six or seven depending on the model and style you would also have to buy the charger it's about 150 bucks and if your battery doesn't work you'll have to buy a new battery and those can run anywhere from a hundred dollars and up you know so these guys you know to get the full kit for the bolus you got to be careful you know if you're going to buy something Make sure that everything is included for the Bolu. You know, make sure that the charger is included, that you know that at least it has a battery because these can be re reselled. So something you definitely want to watch out for with your higher end cameras. If you're going to be jumping into it, jump into it. You know, and make sure that you're getting like these full kits. Awesome cameras. <laughs> I love the bully. Buddy Ben calls them the Beauty. If you guys ever get a chance, go over to Zero Budget Film School. Ben Slaughter is fantastic, knows a ton about Super 8, does a bunch of developing, does some, uh, shows you how to do uh, special effects, camera tricks, very, very cool stuff. Has a weekly show where he talks all about Super 8 stuff. Ben Slaughter, big shout out to you, man. To zero, zero Budget Film School. Pretty much covered, you know, everything that you would need to do. I have this guy over here that I haven't covered only because people really don't like these guys for some reason. These old Bell and Howells, they were, they were tough machines. You know, they had... Um, they're not made out of the best materials. 
You know, the company has been around, had been around for a long, long time and is still around. Now they only make uh, flashlights, <laughs> the tech light. But this is something that I wanted to show you guys is that this is a sound Super 8. This one only takes 18 frames a second. The cool thing about the sound Super 8s was that they held their frame rate a little steadier than the other ones. So where some of the other cameras, like let's say the Nikon, that wasn't like made for sound, these guys could like tend to drop a little bit. You know, so if you are trying to sync some sound up, and that's that's going to be your goal is to shoot something and have synchronized sound with it. Now you don't necessarily need something that has a perfect frame rate nowadays because you can kind of fudge with it a little bit. But if you really want to kind of hedge yourself a little bit, these guys are good. Like, um, I mean, uh, sound Super 8 cameras, not necessarily the Bell and Al. I mean, pick up a Bell and Al if you want. They're not expensive, they're cheap. These guys are hit and miss, man. Sometimes most of them don't work. Uh, some of them do, some of them are newer. Just watch out. Sound Super 8 cameras work a little bit steadier if you can find them in good working order. The only thing is, is that they are gonna be heavier. So they're, it's not gonna be as easy to, you know, it's not just, all oh, right, man, I'm just gonna like, grab something. It's like, let's go and shoot. It's like, oh no, man, well, let's grab this, you know? So it's like, it's a little bit different. Both of these are Bell and Howells. You know, I personally like Bell and Howells. <laughs> so a few things. Not too, too much that you need to take care of when you're buying the Super 8 because what's going to tell you at the end is once you get it. You know, you can take all the precautions that you want when before you're going to order it, but you're not going to know until you actually get that thing that it's going to work. So, buyer beware. Please, be careful, guys. Get yourself a Super 8 that works, and happy shooting. The Omani's World. Thanks for watching, guys. If you guys like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you'd like to see some more videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I will be having, I'll, this is going to be the first of a four-part series that I'm going to be doing. It's going to be a buy Super 8, how to shoot with Super 8, how to develop Super 8, and then how to telescene the Super 8. Using your phone, a camcorder, pretty much that's it. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. The Omani's World, coming at you with how to shoot with, oh no, how to buy Super 8. Not how to shoot Super 8. What are you doing, man? Come on, man. Ah,